it's now live. Thank you very much. Well, good morning to um, board members, um, officers, and indeed any members of the public who are attending through the live stream. And welcome to this meeting of the Long Eaton Town Board. It's got elements of an annual meeting as well as um, more routine business components. I'm Jeremy and I'm, I'm chairing this meeting ever so fleetingly because the first item of business is to appoint or elect a chair. And I'm happy to say that we have had one nomination um, and that's for Richard Ledger. That um, nomination came from James Gregory. Do we have any um, other nominations? Don't see any. Do we have a seconder for Richard Ledger? I'm happy to second, Jeremy. Lovely. So we've got a nomination and a seconder. I can't see any other um, nominations. So let's put um, that to the vote. All those in favour of Richard Ledger, please, would you indicate? And you can either say the words or you can put your thumbs up or you can put it in the chat box. And for completeness, I need to ask if there's anybody against um, that nomination. And I can't see any. Angelica, there's none in the chat box, are there? No. No. So, del delighted to say, um, Richard Ledger, um, subject to you um, being willing to be um, chairman, you are elected as chairman, so congratulations, sir. And um, would you please take over chairing this meeting? Thank you very much, Jeremy. And thank you, everyone, for, for your support. And um, I will continue to do my best to, um, um, to um, take this forward and act on your behalf. Um, so um, obviously, there's been a, um, a change in um, with, the, with the local government elections. So what I would like to do, first of all, is uh, just ask Councillor James Dawson and then Councillor Alex Breen, if he's here, um, to just introduce themselves. So, Councillor Dawson. Good morning, Richard, uh, and thank you. Um, so, obviously, I'm James Dawson, and as of Thursday last week after annual council, I'm now the new uh, leader of the council. And Alex, I'm not sure if he's here, yet or not is uh, the new executive member for planning regeneration and um, town centres so i'm looking forward to working with you all uh, thank you very much james um if we could move on to the second item which is uh, appointment of um vice chair um, we've had one nomination so far, which is Councillor James Dawson, who has been nominated by um, James Gregory. Uh, could we ask if there's a seconder, please, for Councillor James Dawson? Yes, I'm happy to second that, if you wish. Oh, I've got beaten to it. <laughs> OK. Um, I, I missed who that was, actually. Mike, Michael Looking. OK, thank you very much, Michael. And um, could I ask, do we have any other nominations for uh, vice chair? OK, I can't see uh, I can't see anything there. So if we could have a, a show of hands, then please, in the if you can just raise your hand in the. Um, Thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think they're all going up there, James. That's pretty pretty good. And thank you. Again, for completeness, um, if we could just have anybody who's against, if they could just um, make that known, please. Okay. And there's uh, no one against. So um, congratulations, James. I'm very much looking forward to working you with you as um, vice chair in the Long Eaton Town Deal Board. Thank you very Thank you. much. Um, Angelica, uh, could we go on to apologies for absence then please? Uh, 
Yes, of course. I've got apologies from Marie Crowley, who today has been substituted by Adrian Orrell. And then I've got apologies from Andrew Mitchell. Jo Batty sends her apologies. And she today has been represented by Jim Seymour. And finally, apologies from Sav Della Rocca. He's on leave. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angelica. And um, um, so, um, Jim, welcome and um, thank you for substituting to Joe Batty. Could you just turn your camera off, please? And uh, Liz Wigley as well, please. Thank you. Um, could I ask, are there any other declarations of interest, please, over and above those that we've already been made aware of? OK, so note that there are no declarations of interest. Right, if we could move on to the minutes. Um, everybody has will have had a copy of the minutes sent out to them. Um, for the sake of brevity, what I would like to do is just ask if anybody has any issue with the minutes, if they could make them known, please. OK, and I can't see any uh, uh, any issues being raised there. So could we have, uh, um, if we could move to approve those, could we ask for a proposer, please, to approve the minutes? Happy to approve, Chair. Tony King. Thank you very much, Tony. And a, a seconder. Happy to second. Thank you very much, Maggie. And if we have a vote by exception on this, if anybody uh, doesn't want to vote to approve, if they could make themselves known, please. OK, and I can't see anybody there, so the um, if we could move to approve the minutes then, please. If we could now move on to the substantive um, business of the day, the first item is the terms of reference and um, membership of the board. Um, now, obviously, the we have very much moved now to the delivery phase of the Long Eaton Town Deal Board. And as such, the, um, the way that the board functions and our role um, is uh, is going to have to change on that. Um, can I ask for the officers? Does anybody want to go through this, or do you want me to uh, do you want me to go through this? Steve, is there something for you? Well, thanks, Chair. But oh yes, Gary, I'll defer to Gary. Gary, okay, Gary, is this one? Yeah, well, uh, thank you, uh, Richard. Morning, uh, everybody. Uh, I didn't particularly want to say anything, but no one was jumping forward, so I thought I uh, would. Um, hopefully, it uh, is relatively straightforward. Um, as you said, Richard, uh, the Town Deals Board has uh, now passed another milestone. The key uh, point was that we've now submitted all our project summaries uh, to government, so that was uh, ahead of the end of March deadline. We've now entered a different phase where we're now uh, in, moving forward with the implementation um, and you'll get updates across all of the projects uh, later on in the agenda. Um, what the board's focus now shifts to is around the overview of the programme and in particular the performance uh, uh, monitoring reports which are submitted to the government quarterly. Um, and so the terms of reference are now reflecting that shift in where we are in, in the process of the, the town deal board. And part of that is that it's then suggesting um, in these updated terms of reference that the board meetings move to quarterly to reflect that change in the business um, and, and the work that's coming forward. So very happy, Richard, to answer any questions uh, as we go through, but probably that's all I need to say at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gary. Um, does anybody have any questions about the changing role of the board now that we're entering the delivery phase? Okay, um, I I can't see anybody with the with the with the hands up on that. 
Go on. Uh, just bear with me. Um, James Gregory. Uh, yeah, morning, morning, Chair. Morning, everybody. Apologies. I think there's a bit of a lag on the uh, the hand going up, uh, up there. So maybe maybe my computer. Um, no questions on the change into the delivery stage. I think that's a, a really positive, um, positive thing. Um, the only question I was perhaps going to bring this in as an AOB, but the only question I've got around the board at the moment is um, I, I'm quite keen to. I think it's important that we understand the board's the board members purpose, which, as I understood it, is very much to be a board member, but it, primarily to represent the views of the organisation, which is why the individuals were invited to be on the board in the first place. Uh, and I just wondered, as part of this delivery stage, whether there could be a touch point where board members report into the board about the activity they've done within their organisations to uh, promote and explain the progress of the the town deal uh, and the, the the wider projects i think it's important that we 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 all understand that board members are going back to their relevant organizations and spreading the spreading the good news and the progress reports um and it'd be great to understand how board members are doing that perhaps in a couple of meetings time uh, i think it's a point well made jeremy jeremy I, I answer to everything. You don't look at all like Jeremy. <laughs> Morning, Jeremy. <laughs> Briefly had you both on the screen just to um, confirm that. James, I am so I'm I'm terribly sorry. Yeah, uh, I think it is a point well made um, in terms of reporting back. Um, whether that needs to be formally put into the terms of reference for the board or not, um, I. You know, it no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it does Richard at all. I think it's just a point that you know I'd be very keen to not at this meeting, but I'd be very keen to explain what I've done in and around Trent College, promoting the board and 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 updating the the staff and the wider school community on 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 progress. And I, I just think it'd be great to know what what other members have been doing within their within their um their community groups, as it were. James, I, I think that I think that's a great point. Um, it might be one to bring up in the communication section, actually. So I think uh, in the going forwards at the at the board meetings, we can we can have an opportunity for board members to actually say how they've been promoting the work of the of the town deal uh, in the communication section. Um, so Angelica, if we could, you know, put that on future future agendas. Would you be happy with that, James? Absolutely, yeah. I think it's, it's a sort of an informal point, really, and just, just one to, to do going forward. I don't think it needs to be too formal. I think it'd just be a good, uh, as I say, a good thing to do. OK, but thank you very much. Um, there, There is actually one, well, Adrian, or Adrian Oral, please. <coughs> Hello. Uh, about these quarterly meetings, does that mean that all the decisions have been made um, on what's being done? There are no final uh, things to be decided? Because the way the timetable goes, the work's going to be starting uh, soon. And if there are no other decisions, uh, uh, sorry, if there are further decisions before the work starts, surely there needs to be meetings in between. Um, Gary, As do you in, want have you agreed on the actual plan for the town centre and the bridges yet? Um, well, the, the the answer to that, Adrian, is that the detailed plan hasn't yet um, been agreed upon. Um, it's probably best if Gary, do you want to do you want to answer this? Yeah, yeah happy to uh, to jump in there. Yeah, so what we've got here is um, the uh, requirements of, in terms of the governance laid out by government, how the town board uh, works and operates and the responsibilities there, and how that relates to uh, Erewash Borough Council as the accountable body. Clearly, the town board, you're a crucial group of partners. You, you've um, overview uh, to date in terms of shaping the programme and approved those uh, project summaries. What we're now moving through to is a different phase and so there'll be as well as the board additional ways for engagement to happen um, either via the project champion or various uh, stakeholder groups you know for instance there's been richard as you know 
quite a bit of that in regards to the Broad Street Bridge. And so there'll be other ways in which that kind of activity will will happen. But the uh, focus of this board, it returns to uh, an oversight of the programme um, and the sign off of those quarterly uh, performance uh, and, and uh, performance returns. But uh, happy to leave it there, but unless Steve or uh, uh, anybody else wants to add to my answer, but uh, that, that's that's the uh, the situation, Richard. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Adrian, can I also add that I think that the role of the project champions is is still a um, a very valuable one, and that the project champions will be involved with the. Um, with the projects going forwards and you know I would ask the officers to ensure that um, the project champions are informed of any you know key stages that are reached in the in the individual projects in there is also a a, a core group for the town deal board um, and that will be meeting monthly and if there is anything that needs the um, needs to be brought to the attention of the wider board then at those core group meetings we will then be able to you know call a, a meeting in addition to the four scheduled quarterly meetings uh, for the full board so that if there is any variation to projects or anything that needs board approval we can actually um, take that out to the board at that case um, Adrian, does that answer your your query there? Uh, kind of, yes. I think I need to ask some more questions out of this meeting, uh, find out about the subgroups and things. Okay. Uh, well, I'm I'd be uh, very happy to talk to you at any time. Um, I'm sure that um, Councillor James Dawson also would be, and um, you know the officers. Um, um, I'm, I'm sure would also be be happy to to help in any way. Thank you. OK, does anybody else have anything that they would like to raise about the um, about, about the board, the um, terms of reference for the board going forwards? OK, I can't see anybody there. Adrian, you still have your hand up. Is that a legacy legacy hand? It is. OK. Um, so, can I ask for, if no one has anything else, can I ask for a proposer, please? Happy to propose, Richard. Thank you, Stella. And uh, you were just beaten there, Maggie. Are you happy to second? I'd like to second, yes. Thank, thank you, Maggie. Um, so, we'll go, we'll do this. Um, as a vote by exception. So if anybody has uh, any objections to um, to adopting the uh, the uh, new terms of reference for the board, could they make them known, please? Okay, I can't see any objections there. So um, uh, we have the uh, new terms of reference endorsed by the board. Thank you. OK, if we could move on then, please, to programme milestones. Um, Steve Birkenshaw. Thank you, Chair. The first thing point to note with the project milestones, uh, board members will note that we have now disaggregated the remaining five of the town deal projects into seven town deal sub projects. We've, we've debated, discussed uh, of the board previously uh, the structure of the projects in, in terms of how they exist within our relationship to government. Now we've achieved the project summary stage in relation to all projects. For delivery purposes, we are refocusing the projects around basically the principal uh, delivery contractors um for for each element so for the walking and cycling project this the lighting scheme for west park is a separate scheme from the bridge uh, at britannia mills and for the west park schemes the, the 
events hub the event space car park area is a separate project and the waterside project and the broad street bridge project clearly well we we have uh, taken the view that they will need to be delivered by a single contractor to achieve um uh, efficiency and effectiveness in that in that project. So those two are effectively merged into a single sub project. So that puts us back on seven projects. Um, and I think, as you can see from the table, that means there's a, a lot of activity happening because there is progress being made on all seven projects. And though that's a very good thing to report, um, I've and I apologize, this is slightly visceral imagery, um, but I, I look at this and I, I say to myself, this is the moment where the snake swallows the pig in the essence that there is a lot of activity going across a lot of areas at this moment in time. So it's the moment of probably at which our delivery capacity is at the most stretched. As things go forward, and in particular, as we're able to complete and close projects um, and move projects forward from, from the position they're in, probably the capacity issues we would expect would ease. But just to make the point that they're probably at their maximum at this moment in time. The second key thing I'd like to note, have noted, is that we've received um, government funding for the stable block managed workspace units and the Galaxy Row redevelopment and the two elements of the West Park scheme. We've not yet received funding for Long Eaton High Street or the walking and cycling network. Uh, board members will recall that those were the um, issued to government as project summaries at the last meeting in March. Now that means that the work on over 50% of the town deal is currently being progressed at financial risk to the council. So this is also the moment in time when um, there is, the, as well as being at our most stretched in terms of capacity, it's also the particular point where we're most stretched in terms of our financial exposure as well. What we hey, yes. Can I, can I, uh, Maggie's just, um, can I just let Maggie come in there, please? Maggie, yes. through. Yes, it, it is relevant for just what you're saying, Steve. I actually took a call from the Living Up Minister last Friday uh, to check about whether I was in full agreement with the changes we've made to the, uh, the the Green and the High Street project, because obviously it was a variation. And uh, obviously I said that I was fully aware of it. And she said that they would now progress to the next stage of releasing the funds. So I would think that with it being a bank holiday, things have been delayed a bit. But I did say to her that if there's any further delay, if she could get back to me uh, and we'd uh, see what the problem was. But from the government's point of view, uh, she thought it wouldn't be much longer before you got the funding for those projects. Right, thank you very much, Maggie. Um, having, having led the board to the top of the hill, I was going to then gently lead you back down again. And I am not suggesting that there's any, uh, in essence, that there's any issue in terms of the relationship with government over projects. We weren't expecting the monies to be released until later this month. That, that was our expectation. I just wanted to lay out to the board what the consequences of this, these milestones are at this particular moment in time. And I was, was in fact, just going to get on to the point that at the next meeting of the board, I would expect the financial pressures to be eased and probably at the meeting after that, we should be in a position where we're being able to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel in, the, in terms of the capacity issues as well. I really just wanted to emphasise that what, what this milestone table is telling you is that this is the moment where the foot is on the gas, uh, as it were, um, in terms of, of the dealing with the project as a whole. So uh, the critical things which are uh, on the project board before you, which we've achieved, are obviously the, the submission of the project summaries, which board members uh, approved in March. Um, also, um, in relation to the Leisure Hub event space, we've secured planning consent. So that scheme is, is ready to move forward. Um, we received the capital funding for the Galaxy Rose scheme, so that uh, aiding the progress of that scheme. 
and we awarded the construction contract on the stable block managed workspace units. In fact, this is the first first day so far when I haven't we haven't haven't had the uh, the melody of the construction machinery um, entertain me in my workplace because of course it is uh, I'm located in the the offices um, nearby to that construction site. So um, that's just to assure that those things are all in progress and subject to um, you know well. We, we are progressing on on all the projects uh, at this time uh, and we look forward to be able to report at a future date that indeed that we have um, receipt of uh, finances and indeed that further progress as indicated on the milestone tables has been achieved. Uh, thank you, Chair. I'm happy to take any questions. OK, thank you, Steve. Um, James, before I come to you, I will say we have obviously got an update on progress um which in tom's absence leanne is going to be presenting to us so we will get um, a detailed breakdown of where we are on individual individual projects when we get to that point um james gregory yeah thank you uh, thank, thank you chair uh thank you thank you Steve, for the update so a uh, couple of things um one is it's it's great to hear the progress reports, and I, I think we should celebrate the the progress. I think it's you know it, it is very clear that good progress is being made with the, the technicalities of of these schemes, both from an, an administrative and physical progress uh, uh, direction. So that that's great to hear. So, so well done to all involved with that. I, I very much like to be. I'm quite a nosy person. I, I'd love to see the uh, maybe have a, a little tour of the stable block, not to interfere. Just to um, just to see the um, the, the the action. I, I, just putting it out there, um, Steve. I don't know whether that's something for the officers to arrange or for, for Richard for the board to arrange. Whenever, however, perhaps it's a few weeks' time when the weather's even better. Um, but I think as these projects start to materialise, it would be great for the board to um, perhaps meet up in person and and see some physical um, physical work, which which is exciting. And my usual thing, Steve, is there anything more? the project champions or the board can do to support your work in this um to to is there anything more you need from us is there anything more you'd like us to uh to do to support what you're doing towards this well thank you very much for, as, as always for that offer james there, there has been a lot a lot of very useful support you know behind the scenes um which, which is helping us to um get through a lot of these uh technical issues uh, at this time, and I'm, I'm I'm very grateful for that, and and the continued continued support that we've been getting is will be very grateful received and very very useful to us in in continuing with, with these projects. Um, I I don't want to drop a colleague of mine in it, as it were, but I'm confident that um, we could arrange um, site views, but I'm also aware that measures have been taken to actually. Uh, make the progress of the stable block available online. And I see the colleague I didn't want to drop in has actually volunteered, I think, to introduce that. Okay. Leanne, would you Le care Leanne. To explain that? Hi. Um, yes, just to confirm, we do have a time lapse camera that is set up on the top of the roof of the Civic Centre. Um, so what we can try and do is not live on online, as it were, for everybody, but we should be able to get a, a mini video, which is actually quite interesting to watch the, the workshops all coming down and things like that. So I'll happily take an action away to talk to the, the supplier of that to see if we can get that for everybody. Um, sounds, sounds fantastic. And then secondly, in respect of a visit, whilst we're not against having a visit, it's something that I can talk to the contractors to organise, and I'm sure they will facilitate. We are, as you'll find out shortly in updates, at the end of the strip out and demolition stage, so probably at the unsafest point in the whole project. So if you can bear with us till we get it so it's um, suitable for people to walk around and sort of less PPE than normal, that would be helpful to me. Le Leanne, th thank you for that. Could I just ask, when when do you think it would be safe enough for um, for us to Hopefully come and have a look? Hopefully, a couple of weeks. I don't think we're far away from it. I'd like them to just be able to finish getting all the rubbish out of the way, which um, I'm due for a walk round after this meeting, actually, so I can provide a bit more clarity on that after that. Okay, thank you. 
Um, James, thank you for the suggestion. Now, under my under my tenure, we haven't actually ever met in person as a board. So whilst I, 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 I'm pretty certain I've met everybody, um, everybody now who attends these meetings, I do think it would be a great way for us all to get together and um, you know celebrate the work that both the, the council has done and the board has done in the project which is now which is now happening and it might actually be a good communications um, opportunity as well you know for a bit of a photo shoot as well and to thank everybody for their input so leanne can i can i ask could we arrange something for maybe a month's time something like that when when you're comfortable but yeah, let me let me have a word with the contractor and see when they feel it is the most appropriate time to do something. OK, um, James. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Lana. Um, I, 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 look, let's not make this uh, um, absolutely when the contractor is comfortable and when you're comfortable, Leanne, um, let's, you know, it, at the ideal time, it would be, I agree, it'd be nice to actually see things taking shape rather than things being taken down. Um, so I think that that would be fantastic. So whenever, whenever for, for me, my suggestion would be at the right time for the contract. And my experience of contractors showing people around sites, it's good to do it when they're ready because you normally get a much better experience uh, rather than going perhaps a little bit rather than going to the dress rehearsal. So uh, let's 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 be in their hands on that one. And Richard, just to point out, I do wonder. Um, I'm not sure whether this is my point to make, but I'm going to make it anyway. I just wonder, is it time to get back to in-person meetings? I know we had a couple at the beginning, gosh, two, three years ago, is it now? Um, it's something in my sector where we're really making concert effort to get back to. Now, Teams is fantastic. We're all, we're all good at it. We all know how to use it now. That's very good for the future and it's very useful. But actually, in, in the organisations I'm involved in, uh, we're really making an effort to get back to in-person meetings um and we're finding that very valuable so i don't know whether that's something we could look at also J james i've i've had exactly the same thought obviously especially as we are now moving to um to quarterly meetings even if it were only every every other meeting that that were in person i think that might be that might be valuable um jeremy before i come to you um vaughan had his hand up first so um Vaughan Morris, and then we'll we'll come back to you, Jeremy. Yeah, uh, thanks, Richard. Um, just by the way, um, one question I had about the stables lot was: Is there a lot of asbestos removal? <clears throat> so that was uh, on my mind there. Um, regarding the stable block construction, uh, well, the contract period. To me, well, on the schedule, it shows March 25, March 2025 as complete. But later on in the report to government, I think it's a lot shorter. Uh, for, for, for the stables block, 24 months or round and about seems a long time on site. Um, we have discussed this before, Chair, you, you, you may recall that the the point is that the milestones and the milestones chart are those that were entered on the project summary forms. Ah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and for good or for bad, uh, it's not really a very functional to move the milestones around in advance yeah. of achieving the milestones. Um, yeah. The purpose of the milestones is to provide a, a sort of record of where we are. And what we can see is there's been slippage on quite a lot of fronts and then in some areas we've been able to make up time so we get the milestones report is giving us a um a real-time record of where we are against our original program um and yeah, that was the logic that we took in terms of setting the milestones out if we start moving the future milestones around now we could be accused of gerrymandering the outcomes in yeah yeah so uh for, but just for it on the um, events field at West Park, uh, it, it's been decided to uh, hold fire on that progress until after the winter. I, Vaughan, I, I think that this is probably... Um, well, it's a, it's a general picture. We, we've been asked to look at this schedule and that's my reaction to it. I okay. don't think... Is this going to government? That's what I'm. I don't think it is. No, Vaughan, it's not. This, no, this is. No. 
sorry, the, the milestones report is a report that the board requested and that is produced to keep the board informed of the progress of the projects. Yeah. The milestones in there are those that were set out in the project summary. So the milestones have, have never moved, which right. means that the board can get a clear view of where project delivery is against the original milestones that were set. Now, as we could go further in the project, Vaughan, it is quite it's, it is definitely the case that you know our plans will vary and indeed already have in terms yeah. of what we're intending to do. But if we start changing all the milestones now to reflect what the current plans are, then it doesn't really give you a clear view about where we are against the whole project um, as originally conceived. There's, there's, there's an alternative view that we could do that, but I, I would just I, be cautious that I'd be coming to every month, I'd be moving all the future milestones to make it look like we haven't missed any. Yeah, I, yeah. Vaughan, if, if we did that, what we would end up doing is just having a single report, um, probably from Tom's team, so Tom or Leanne, saying where we were with each individual project. And that would be, a, you know, a, a constantly evolving project plan dependent on what was happening with the individual projects. Why we decided to stick with the milestone, as Steve has said, is because this is what we originally said we were going to do. And it just gives us an indication as to whether we are, you know, we're, we're achieving it or, or failing in what we, what we want. And I'm sure that when Leanne comes to do her, her update on progress for the stable block, you will see that we are way, way, way in advance of uh, March 25, which was yeah. the original milestone yeah. that was that was laid out. Yeah, it's, uh, my one point is it's just a shame that the progress on the uh, events field has been effectively delayed six months because you never know with the weather. Winters can be uh, quite, quite uh, good for construction. Um, strange weather we have these days but every every delay is going to cost more money that's all uh, that's all i can say on that Le leanne do you want to address this when we come to the um pro project updates and um i can or i can just pass comment on the event field now if you would prefer that's absolutely fine so the decisions only recently been made to disaggregate the um the separate projects within the uh, west park events hub um we have previously tendered the contract we now need to go back out and re-tender the contract um to because the previous quotes are, are invalid so to do that now starting from now would put us on site in november and december in a floodplain which the ea would probably be unlikely to allow us to do because they're flood storage area so the reason that we are we're sitting on it a little longer is to make sure that we can get permission from the environments agency and take advantage of the better hopefully weather um in that in the sort of spring summer season this will also hopefully prevent delays on site and additional costs by the contractor that we would incur for delay so it's yeah. a decision that's been taken looking forward and being practical to try and make sure it sort of remains on budget and in time scales that we give thank you leah can I, can I say, look, looking at the timescales on that, so the milestones for that project actually fit in with, with that revised schedule anyway, don't they? That um, construction procurement commenced November 23 and um, construction contract July 24. So, you know, it, it again highlights why we have the two, if you like, the two, the uh, what yeah. the first seems odd are having two schedules running in parallel. It's just that completion is delayed, Richard. That's all. That's completion uh, on site is delayed. I think it's more um, accurate, Vaughan, to say that the opportunity to accelerate it, which we would have liked to have achieved, hasn't been achieved in this particular instance. Right. OK. Yeah. OK. OK, Vaughan, if, you, if you're happy with that, there'll be plenty of opportunity on the project yeah, updates was... to. Okay. Uh, OK, all right, thank you. And uh, that, I think that was well put on um, um, uh, Steve as well. Um, Jeremy, you wanted to come in on um, 
John, we go to alternate in-person meetings. Yeah, no, fine, Richard. So just a very small point picking that up. So the next meeting, I think, is the 1st of September. Um, do you want to make that a physical uh, meeting then in, in Long Eaton? I would, um, I would dearly right. love to make that a physical meeting in Long Eaton, yes. yes. Let's, let's assume people will, will endeavour to make that then. And um, uh, Angelica, can you, can you um, make sure that's, that's what's organised then? Thanks, Richard. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. OK. I think that brings the item to a close, Chair. OK, I'll stop. Uh, oh, uh, do we have any can other? Can I ask a, a quick question? Sorry. Yes, Tony. Yeah. Yeah, I did put my hand up. Um, w w we talked about the uh, capital funding being released, and and Maggie talked about the it, that being imminent. Hopefully, I noticed that five of the projects depend on capital funding being released this month. Right, and I I take your remarks, Steve, ab ab about uh, about stretching resources and and about about problems. Do you see it as a as a risk that then that the capital funding isn't released in June, because it must be a, a, a significant lump of the whole of the whole town deal budget, I would think. And bear in mind that we're not meeting until, again until September. When we meet in September, um, will this will the risk of of have occurred, if you like, that 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 we we have a problem with working capital on 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 the um uh, on the on the project so so the sorry tony so yeah the, you the can borough count, thank you the, the borough council calls as a responsible body is the holder of the financial risk in relation to the town deal um so south's absent uh, from this meeting he's been doing a lot of work in terms of being able to uh, calculate and report the level of risk that the council is currently holding. And as I indicated at the start of this section, we're probably at that maximum risk right now. Yeah. Now, in terms of cash flow, it's manageable because of the advances which the government has been able to gave us in the previous year. So we can maintain momentum, but it is at risk. The council acknowledges that risk and has taken that risk into account in all the current procurement decisions that it is making okay. um, and in particular on the decisions around the high street which are actually the very high value ones um, yeah sure because we recognize that though it would be comfortable to wait for the money to actually land we have to have some confidence that it's going to come and it is we are not going to be able to achieve the town deal delivery timetable if we wait for that level of comfort so Yes, there is risk. The risk is with the Borough Council. The Borough Council is holding that risk. I'm delighted to hear from Maggie that there's good indications that the funding will be released as we were anticipating. And that's the base, you know, that was the risk that we operated on. Um, but the, in terms of milestones, I don't, re, I don't report uh, assurances, I report actualities. So the, the milestones will report when the money lands in the account. No, um, that's under that's understood. Understood, Steve. My my worry is it's a large amount of money for for for, for a borough council to to be out of pocket, let's say for for a, a couple of months, and whether when we meet again in 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 September, that that may have had a, a an adverse effect on delivery of the milestones. That's all. Jeremy, did you want to comment on that? I think Steve's covered the points. Look, there is risk. I accept Maggie's assurances, of course. Um, but like Steve, you know, when I see the money, oh, that's yes. when I, you know, that's yeah. when I can count it. Um, of course, th there is technically a risk. We're accepting that risk, and the existence of that risk is not going to delay um, progress. Steve's made the point. I endorse that point and we need to crack on. Thank you, both of you. Uh, thank you. Can I, Steve, can I just ask one question? When when it says capital funding released, is that all of the capital funding for the project or is that just the start of stage payments? It, it's the start of stage payments, Chair, so yeah. yes. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. Um, 
if there's does anybody have anything else they want to ask about project milestones uh, okay thank you very much for that update steve if we could move on to the town's fund monitoring and evaluation and um, could i ask who, who's going to present this is it you steve or is jill going jill going to do it Hi. Hi, Jill. Hi, Richard. Thank you very much. This this will be my be, this will be my um feature for today. Can you can you see me okay? By the way, so it's you're very of... very dark on the screen. Um, I'm afraid I've done the best I can. I've got the. Let me just turn the screen a little. That's that helping? That's there much we go. Better. You're not in front of the window now. So <laughs> there we go. Much much better. Okay, thanks. So, thank you very much, Richard, and um, good morning, board. Um, yes, so today I'm reporting to you on the latest monitoring and evaluation for the town deal plan. And as you, we last reported uh, six months ago, which was back in November, and that was the period up to September. So that was the April to September period. So this time we're reporting on the um october through to march and so that indicates it'll actually be a twice yearly reporting which which is the um the reporting going forward rather than um which quarter which i think a couple of people have suggested so we'll be having um feedback to to the board every every six months on the reporting so this report is on the monitoring and evaluation and it's looking at how the program is in terms of the actual um the spend what's been committed and actual what we think will be happening going forward in terms of the financial forecasts and also the um, outputs and outcomes for the projects. For this um, um, return is slightly different from the last one. Firstly, um, the, the monitoring reports actually do evolve, so they do uh, slightly change each time. And for this one, we are looking at not just the programme, which is what we reported on last time, but also there are some project specific details. And the projects that we have to report on for this report were for those which have been, um, been given permission for the project. So for which project summaries had been awarded. So that would be for the, um, the walking and cycling project, for the walking and cycling. No, beg your pardon, not the walking and cycling project. We'll be there for the stable block, for the Galaxy Row, and for the West Park event space. The walking and cycling and the High Street project are those two projects which had the, the last summary documents submitted to government in March, so they haven't yet been, um, weren't approved within the period. So we've just got the reports for, for those first three projects. Um, so, we simply, as you can see, there's, there's the, the the information for the overall spend and then a little bit of information for those three first three projects. So rather than going into all the detail of, of that reporting, has anybody got any questions, please? There is a lot of detail, Jill. <laughs> yes, there I is, yes. To, I have to say. Um, well, you, do, you you also have to sign off on, on behalf of the board, so um, I'm know sure I you've do. had a good look through, so yeah, I do appreciate I've, that. Um, I, um, uh, my, my, yeah, my heart sank when I saw the numbers last night when I was going through <laughs> the, uh, when I was going through the paper, paperwork. Um, the, the, I, I guess one, one thing that I wanted to ask you about was the, the early money that was released, so that was, and we've got down that it's spent on uh, Wi-Fi and cycle storage project, and then the Galaxy Road land acquisition. What actually happened with the cycle storage? Did that did that ever go anywhere? The cycle storage did go somewhere eventually. I have to say it was one of the perhaps the what should have been the most simplest, most modest project, and also took. I have to say. I'm sure you won't mind me saying it's taken rather longer than we expected. Um, we hope to introduce a brand new system into Long Eaton, which was secure cycle storage with an app based um, locking system. Unfortunately, through lockdown, lots of the contractors, lots of the working partners, because it was actually three or four working partners to actually um, produce the, the, the locking cycle um, um, application, actually went bust, went out of business. 
um, partnerships evolved, partnerships dissolved, and the last partnership that we had, which was the app-based provider and the locker-based um, company, actually their partnership unfortunately dissolved as well. So we have a very simple cycle storage, which is some conventional cycle um, cycle hoops, um, which are um, around. I'm, I'm gesturing here because as you can probably tell, I'm actually in Long Eaton. So they're yeah. down the high down the high street and turn right by the um, by the um, the old Sandown Down building. So they're just on the side there. So it was, um, we had grand plans, unfortunately, practically that, um, that offer isn't available. Can, can I ask how much money did we spend on what turned out to be cycle hoops then? Cycle hoops, it was, um, I'm afraid I don't have the, have the figures to hand. Would anybody in finance have that to hand? That it was just, or... it was just a modest few thousand, I think in the end, as opposed to, uh, a fair few thousand. And I mean, how I much money did we lose with the people going bust on us? We we didn't actually lose any money at all. We we lost an awful lot of officer time, time. Um, yeah. in and time and, and negotiations, but no yeah. actual, thankfully, no actual. And obviously, money. a lot of frustration on your your part. Can I, it uh, was it was a, a big team effort. I mean, a lot of people were very um, yeah. wanting to to move that project forward, and unfortunately, we couldn't move it further than okay. it went. Thank you. Um, Maggie through. Can I ask, did it include the cycle storage and, uh, at the Longington station? No, it didn't. No, that's it was a separate it was just, project. Um, that's something separate, yes. So that's not part okay, of the town deal project. Right, because it does, it, the town deal does extend that far uh, geographically. So I just wondered if it was, because it's quite impressive there. I think it hopefully it'd make a huge difference. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure was that was um, if that, that wasn't something that was part of the Town Deal project, though. So, Ma Maggie, is that cycle storage has been introduced at the station? So, would yes. that have been, yeah. would that have been done by the rail? Network rail, perhaps? Yeah. I don't know, because I think it's on um, either Derbyshire land or Erewash land, because the car park at Longington Station is, is uh, Erewash Borough car park rather than a network rail or East Midlands. So it's it, it looks good though. Thank you. Uh, James Gregory. Yeah, just just to just to Anybody say uh, coming on that come on it coming on what Maggie's just said morning morning Maggie. Um it, it is absolutely fantastic cycle storage at the station. It's it's the best I've ever seen. And many people have said to me how brilliant A it is and B it looks. So whoever whatever that was part of congratulations over on that because it's 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 had a real halo effect um I, 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 in line with what maggie's saying i was actually talking to the um local police about um something to do with long eat and a good news story actually and they were saying that i think the cycle shed there is on is it council land or half of it's on the railway land there was some big story but actually what it proved for me was uh, different bodies would work together and this isn't a board matter, but different bodies would want to get work together to get a really fantastic result at the station. And I thought that was fantastic. Thanks, James. Uh, thanks, Maggie. I'll go and have a look at it. Um, probably drive down and park in the car park, but uh, which kind of defeats the object. But um, yeah. Um, does anybody else have any any questions for Jill on the on the monitoring? Okay, that's. Uh, I don't know whether that. Uh, um, Vaughan, you had your hand up there. Yeah, just only very quickly, Jill. Uh, as the, this is report going to government, presumably, yes, yeah. isn't it? Yes, um, it is. On project three uh, of the. Uh, I haven't got a page number because it's a spreadsheet, but there's a spelling. A spelling on the archaeological, archaeological, sorry, and it's archaeological. Uh, beg your pardon. There's, oh, that's there's that's about, the joy of spreadsheets; they don't show up in red if you've got a spelling no, mistake. I know, I know exactly the feeling. <laughs> yeah. So uh, <clears throat> there's four repeats of it. So it, it just it, that one, and then the very final one that's the form for signature somewhere. I think we've already checked that one. We've actually did we 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 couldn't spell board, could we? Uh, no, uh, well I don't know. It's um, there's a, a, a 
T-O, there's a two missing after the town deal is required to have sight of these performance reporting return. It's, it may have been a sorry, copy and paste thing. So is that a, is that a pet, is that the actual um, board report which covers the, the report? No, it's the, re the review and sign off sheet. Okay. Oh, it's in guidance notes, actually. You, you might have copied and pasted a government typo. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Oh, no, it's a government it's standard form, isn't it? Is it a standard form? Well, town deals are confirmed that the town deal board has had sight of this document prior to submission. Is required to have sight. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that 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 is that is the actual form itself. So where that where you'd like a two, unfortunately, there's a two missing in the in the um the form. Yeah. Um, so we we can't pop that in because it's it's not part that we fill in. No, fair enough. Sorry but about thank that. Thank you. Thank, well, it's thank you for thank you for your your comments on that. So basically, it's um, project three archaeological. Um, we'll check the spelling on that before we before we send it off. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, Lord. Thank you, Jill. Um, Stella Scott. To just congrat congratulate Jill and the team. There's an awful lot of work gone into those spreadsheets. Well, and that yes, it's, it's it. um... so. I think you know. Congratulations. It's uh, and I know how, how time consuming some of these things can be and how frustrating. So I think you know we should just congratulate you and the team on all the work behind it. Well, thank you, Stella. As you suggest, there is a there is a t whole team who's pulled this together. It's um. Yes, it's uh, unfortunately more than a morning's work, which we which we'd like it to get to. Hopefully, by by in about five year, five years time, we'll get it down to a, a good morning's work, and it'll be nice and streamlined. Okay, okay thank you very much, Richard. All right. Um, so, if if there are no further questions on the monitoring and um, reporting, um, we uh, need to approve this for submission. So, could I have a proposal, please? Happy to propose, Richard. Thank you, Maggie. And a seconder. Happy to second, Richard. Uh, thank you, Tony. Um, okay, and if we do a vote by exception, so if anybody um, uh, has any objections, if they can make them known. Um, uh, I can't see uh, any objections there at all, so um, the report is approved for submission. Thank you very much, Jill, for Thank that. You, Richard. Thank you, Thank you. You know, echoing Stella's, um, you know, the sheer volume of work is uh, is apparent um, on, on that report. Okay, um, Leanne, could we go on to update on progress then, please? Yep, we certainly can. Um, so I will start with um, the first project, um, which is the stable block, which, as we touched on earlier on, is the most advanced of all of them. So currently we've got Jay Tomlinson who are working on site. Um, they have completed the internal strip out and nearing completion on the demolition phases. Um, so that's enabled us to sort of strip it right back to the bare bones of the building, which has been quite interesting to see. Um, I think as Vaughan asked earlier on, he asked if there was any asbestos. There was asbestos, and this has all been removed by a competent and licensed contractor as required by the asbestos regulations. So that's all done and dusted. Um, moving forward, um, officers will continue to monitor progress on site and liaise with the SALIX representatives in relation to the decarbonisation funding. Officers are also liaising with potential occupants to secure lettings, and we've actually had a high level of interest to date with some advanced negotiations in place of three of the units. So, it, you know, that's prior to any advert advertisement. So it's looking very good there. Um, as discussed, we'll look to try and arrange a meeting at a convenient time to the contractor um, to fit in with their health and safety protocols. OK, um, thanks. Has anyone got any questions on the stable block? Uh, what what I would like to say, Leanne, is the fact that you're getting inquiries says that this is exactly the the right project that that was picked by the board to be done. And uh, you know, um, when when do you think we'll we'll actually have people moving in and working in the city in, in the city in the town centre? <laughs> will it um, will it I'll... be this side of Christmas? Do you think? 
Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yes, it may not be all fully let, obviously, by then, but we're hoping at the very end of the year we'll have people moved in. That's excellent. Thank, thank you. J James Gregory? Yeah, thank you. Um, it looks sounds fantastic and it's great that we've got physical progress, as I've already said. Shall we just be a bit realistic that things do slip and we all know things slip when on site? And also, I, I, I think Christmas sounds ambitious to me. Yes, it's a great aim. It will be fantastic to have tenants in place. But let's let's be realistic. Let's give the uh, the officers and the delivery team a chance. I think we should maybe say um, uh, perhaps early spring, early to late spring to, to be getting people in there. Let's be realistic about the uh, the state of the construction industry and also uh, how long it takes to get people over the uh, over the line. Thanks, James. you um obviously the voice of experience talking about construction projects there but i think i think the project the project is well advanced now isn't it leanne you know it is it is going well yeah it's so far so good like i said a moment ago we've got it back to the bare bones so now we can see what we've got there have been a few amendments that have come out from that um so we do need to sort of go back to the listed building and just get some approvals for some alterations to some of the timbers um but you know it's a refurb project it was expected to a degree so um yep hopefully we can start putting it all back together and make it look super duper for everyone thank you okay okay shall i move on to west park waterfront yes please okay as steve mentioned earlier on um the disaggregation of the business cases has enabled us to move these projects along in a different manner and independently of each other. However, the waterfront is significantly connected to Broad Street Bridge. As I'll come on to in a moment, um, we are reviewing an alternative option now for Broad Street Bridge from the one that was put out for public consultation. And therefore, Gagarin have been appointed to progress the waterfront alongside this other option. They will um, start to engage the key stakeholders again within the design process to sort of keep everybody in the loop as we did before. Um, and that's all I can really say on that one. I'll come into a bit more detail when we get to the bridge, if that's OK. OK, um, have we got any questions on the waterfront then or at this particular point? All right, thank you, Liam. Okay. Lovely. So the next one is the West Park events field. Again, as we touched on earlier on, um, following this disaggregation, we are now in a position to progress this forwards. However, we are not rushing ahead and going into to go at construction in the winter. We will be going out to retender this towards of 2023, and then this will enable the full business case to be completed with an aim to start on site sort of the second quarter 24 to take advantage of the weather and the ground conditions. We're also aiming to have the West Park events feel complete ahead of the bonfire night in 2024. Okay, if if that doesn't happen, does that stop the bonfire night going ahead, or is, is it that? No, um, it's it would just be a parking difficulty, shall we say? But we, this we we'll be planning it in, and you know we are touching a lot of wood as it is construction and I've not got control of the weather. Um, we're planning it in so it shouldn't clash at all. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions about the events field? Okay, Leanne. Lovely. So moving on to Galaxy Row, the authority have now acquired number 43, which means that we now own two out of the four parcels of land. So that's been a very positive step forwards. We are continuing with the support of specialist consultants to continue to negotiate with the remaining landowners and will continue to do so th throughout, um, even if we do need to progress and serve the CPO notices. An outline planning application has been submitted and awaits validation. That's another key step to it done. And then alongside the land acquisition and planning permission activities, officers have been working with the external consultants to develop required documents to tender for a developer. 
So these are all in hand. And then once we've got the validation, once the documents are all complete, we will be able to go out to tender for the developer. Okay. Um, can, can I ask what the time scale is for the CPO? So if we are unsuccessful with negotiation, how long would the CPO take? Um, that hasn't been fully agreed, um, but I would look, I think by the end of June, we would know a firm position on when we were serving the notices. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions on the Galaxy Road uh, project? Okay, Leo. Okay, moving on. Okay, so next we move to the Broad Street Bridge. So following the public consultation that was carried out on option three of Broad Street Bridge, um, the results of which are now on the Long Eaton Town Deal website. Um, following the consultation, uh, with support from Richard, meetings have been held with the key stakeholders, which has enabled an alternative bridge design to be considered. This option is now currently out with Gagarin to progress through to the Reba 3 stage. Once it's at Reba 3 stage, a cost estimate will be produced to enable selection of the final design to be submitted for planning and tendered. This will enable the full business case to be written. To get to this stage, there is a significant amount of work that needs to be done. And so we're expecting that the decision won't be till later on this year as to which bridge will move forwards. So the decision won't just be based on design, it'll also be based on buildability and cost. So we've got a lot of work to get through before we can make that final decision. Okay. Um, I would actually just like to take this opportunity to thank um, uh, Michael Lucking and Peter Dawson for the work that they've done in uh, opening the door for us to look at the alternate um, the alternate proposal for a, a, a different design of bridge. Whether we're able to achieve that or not, we don't know yet, do we, Leanne? But no. you know, but, you know, we we must thank them for um for for their efforts in doing that. It is very much appreciated. Um until the um Pete Pete Wern. Sorry, um uh, just a question. Uh, to clarify, if you have the new design for that bridge approved, does that mean there will not be uh, access from the towpath? No, we're still looking to maintain an access to the towpath, but uh, we still need to look at the details of that. It will be likely to be a stepped access with a running rail for cycles rather than a ramped access down to the towpath. Okay, thank you. Le Leanne, in, in terms of that, that project for the next board meeting in September, do you think we would be in a position to actually show some visuals to the board for, for that? Uh, potentially a sketch of it. Obviously, we already have a concept option, um, but it does need a lot of working up um, to look at the levels and where we can make it work. I wouldn't wish to commit to a definite yes, um, but if we are able to share something, then we we will. And I think it would be um, I think it would be very beneficial so that people have got an idea of um, of, of what we're actually talking about, if it we is will, possible. Yeah, we will progress our best endeavours to do so, but no promises. Thanks, Leanne. Yeah. Um, Adrian Oral. You said there's going to be a ramp access down to the canal. What about uh, wheelchair users and mobility uh, devices? So they are still able to access off Lawrence Street. So they would need to go along Milner Road and then back up Lawrence Street. And there is a, a level access there. OK, is there uh, again, is there an opportunity to um, have further input into these things at some kind of subgroup? The, the the designers will be getting engaged with the key stakeholders again, as we have done previously. Um, but if you have, have any specific concerns or anything, you're welcome to be in, get in touch with those officers and we will listen to them and pass them on to the designers. Yeah, OK. 
Adrian, if I if I can come in on that, so I'm actually the project champion for the Broad Street Bridge. Uh, I do know how difficult this has been as a as a project. And um, believe you me, if you have any any things that you want to have discussed, if you want to come come to me and as project champion, I will um, make sure that they are raised with the uh, with the design team that are looking at it. This this project is it's it's almost the flagship project for the Long Eaton Town deal in the it's I believe it's the one that potentially can make the most difference to how uh, how the town functions and how it links the, the town to West Park. So it is very important that we get it right. And you know if you have anything that that you want to um, any comments, any suggestions, I'd be very, very welcome to receive them. And I would make sure that they get raised with the um, with the design team for us. Yeah, I'll uh, definitely get in touch because I've got uh, alternative um, ideas. Okay, all right. Well, you know, outside this meeting, we'll we'll get together, and I'll be very happy to go through those with you. And I can obviously also um, go through some of the history that's also already happened in what we've looked at uh, so far. And you know, give you some of the feedback that that generated at the time. Thank you. Okay, uh, Stuart Allen. Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm not working very well here. Um, yes, I did my own wheelchair survey of, of users, and I found uh, I talked to many of them, and I found only one of them had ever been down the canal towpath. There was a general sort of feeling that. Um, it was dangerous to them. Uh, if they fell in, they drowned because they couldn't get out. I found visually impaired wheelchair users. So I only found one wheelchair user who had ever been down the towpath. Thank you. That's very, very interesting, Stuart. Thank you. Okay, um, Adrian. Adrian Oral, you've got. Is that a legacy hand, or do you have another? Do you want to make another comment? Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Uh, I was going to put my hand up as a wheelchair user who has you or tried to use the towpath uh, and found it very inadequate, which is why I asked the question about this ramp. Okay. Um, in which case, you know, the, obviously your personal experience would be really delighted to. I'd be delighted to have that and your comments on the proposed design. So, you know. Again, let's let's get together outside the meeting, and um, I'd be, you know, welcome your valued opinion on it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions on the Broad Street Bridge project? Okay. Okay, Leah. In that case, I'll proceed on to Britannia Road Bridge. Um, so as I think many people are aware that we've been looking at a, a new location to land the Britannia Road Bridge. So officers have now engaged with Futures Housing in relation to the new location um, and they await a sketch design to be able to agree in principle to the location. So um, off the back of that, we have appointed engineers Watermans to produce the concept design for approval um, in principle from the stakeholders. Once we have that, we can then start to engage with Futures Housing, et cetera, um, EA and Canals and Rivers Trust to see what they think of in principle. And then um, we can progress from there. We've also appointed Corius Group um, as consultants to assist with the pro progression of this project as project managers and then moving on to quantity surveyors, employees, agents and principal designers. Um, they will assist us to develop the tender documents and then we will go out and seek to appoint a contractor in due course. We're also carrying out surveys and reports which are required to input into the design to develop it to concept design and Reba 3. And then from then we will just keep moving the project forward. Thank you. Um, can, I, can I ask Leanne, you know when you said you've appointed um uh, a company to produce some conceptual designs is that just initial designs or are they is that are they going to do the entire design for the bridge 
the, uh, it's the initial design, first of all, as discussed earlier on, the walking and sil cycling project hasn't received government sign off for the summary document. So we're managing the the exposure to funds at the moment by giving a partial appointment. The intention will be to progress with them. But until we've got confirmation from government, we don't want to commit to fees. OK. All right. Can, can I ask that, you know, that obviously before um, that gets, once the funding has come through and, you know, as, as a board, can we please have sight of the design documents and, um, you know, so yes. that we actually get an idea of what, what is going to be. Uh, yes. Have an opportunity to comment on it, please. Um, yep. Is there are there any other comments about the Britannia Britannia Mills Bridge? Okay, Leanne. Okay, lovely. Uh, so West Park Lighting. Um, this one, as you're aware, was parked for some time, um, given its connection to the two bridges, which are obviously much larger projects. Following the disaggregation of the individual elements, we are now in a position to progress this. So we've re-engaged with Eon, who did the initial design and provided um, costs for this, who are now currently re-looking at the costs and will be coming back to us with revised costs accordingly. Once we've got the revised cost, it will enable the full business case to be written and approval to be sought. And provided that everything goes smoothly, we are aiming to undertake these works later this year. OK, thank you. Is there any questions on the West Park lighting? So I know, I, I know you're friends of West Park um, and you still have your hand up. Is that a legacy hand or would... Would you like to um, comment on this? OK, thank, thank you, Stuart. OK, Leanne. OK, and then finally, we move on to the Long Eaton High Street project. Um, this is started to progress nicely. We've had meetings with Derby County Council and we have a collaborative agreement currently being drafted. Derby County Council have also confirmed that the project has been included within their capital works programme which is a big a positive for us. Um, we are now in the process, along with Derby County Council, in agreeing appointments with the designers, um, and then the design will begin in earnest later this month. And I know everybody will be very keen to see what happens on this. So we are appointing ACOM, and there will be some engagement opportunities further down the line. Thank you, Leanne. Are there any, any questions on the high street? But Tony King. Yeah, can I just correct Leanne? I'm sorry, Leanne, it's Derbyshire. I don't want to cause I'm any sorry, problems. Derbyshire. No, I, I, Apologies. I, 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 no, I'm not being picky. I'm just uh, I'm just wanting to avoid any future confusion that somebody goes to Derby Derby City Council and look, looks for the looks for the papers anyway. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Thanks, Tony. And any other any other questions on the high street? Um Leanne, obviously, the, um, uh, Vaughan Morris. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, I missed a little bit of what you said. Does it mean that the public are going to be consulted in uh, what's proposed? Yeah, there will be some engagement, definitely, for public to, to see concept designs, etc. But we're so far away from that at the moment. I can't give any guidelines on, on when that will occur because we've not yet appointed the designers. Yeah, lovely. OK, thanks. Thank you, Vaughan. Um, Leanne, does, does that mean, obviously, the, um, the high street, to a large extent, was, was out of... The control of the borough council wasn't it because it was so reliant on input from um, Derbyshire County does that now mean that with the agreements that you have in place that that risk has been pretty much mitigated uh oh, it will always remain a a risk but we're definitely in a stronger position 
um, the Derbyshire County Council one securing within their capital pro program was uh, was a, a big positive for the scheme and then two they are now going to they're not yet appointed but going to be appointed to project manage and lead on this project so they will be taking a, a large degree of ownership thanks Leanne okay is there any other questions on the high street Okay, is that is that all of the projects, Leon? That's I, all the projects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, could, could I could I ask for the next um, for the next board meeting? It would be very useful for us to have. I know that we've obviously got the initial um, project milestones that um, that Steve went through earlier. It would be very useful for us for us to have an idea of where we are now with you know, just a broad basis of where we are with the individual projects. So whilst we've got, if you like, the, the long stop of the project milestones, it would be very useful for us to have an idea of where we are in reality with, with each of the projects. Uh, is that something that your team would be able to, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, massive, massive detail, but you know, just so that we've got some some broad dates to look at. I think Steve we, might. Yeah. Yes, we can. And the only reason I'm going to pause, sorry, Steve, I will let you come in here, is because we we have to tend to the projects. Then the full business case has to be written, and it's not until we actually appoint that we can provide secure dates on that that we um, with the contractors, as you were, everything's subject to move slightly. Um, Steve, do you want to? come in here at all? Yes, Leanne. The, um, as you might expect, Richard, we have um, project monitoring that's coordinated, you know, across the council from within my service. So we would be able to provide you, I think, that snapshot position. And what you're asking for is another is another re standard report, isn't it? Which I think is, you know, would be useful. Um, it, it, it would be, so rather than, you know, obviously today Leanne's had to go through each project saying, you know, this is where we are, this is what's going to happen. Yeah. This is, it'd be nice just to have that on a, you know, just a, on a report to yeah. us as well to support to support um, Tom and Leanne as well when they're, when they're, when they're giving it to us. Well, we, we can do that from our live project managing management function. So... We will that, that provide would be, you an abstract of that at the next board meeting. That would be very much appreciated. Thank you. Okay. If uh, if anyone has any other questions for Leanne, uh, thank you very much, Leanne. Um, no it's uh, uh, for for all of that. Okay. If we could move on to communication plan, then please, and uh, Gary Smith. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, so uh, we've got full page uh, coverage of uh, the stable block as part of the Long Eaton uh, Town uh, deal updates in the next uh, edition of EBC Today. So that should be hitting uh, all residents' uh, doorsteps from Monday the 19th of June. So uh, that will be given the next instalment, basically. There's been regular updates, as you know, in, in that publication. Uh, all the publicity remains in uh, the key retail points, including the supermarkets and other cafes and uh, the library in, in Long Eaton. We'll continue to look to update and refresh those uh, leaflets and pull up banners uh, as those projects develop. Um, the communications team have um, been liaising with the AeroWash partnership, so there's going to be some publicity there at their summer networking and business showcase event uh, that's being held on the 30th of June. Um, and we'll also be looking uh, in the coming weeks and months um, at uh, some more uh, interviews, etc., with project champions that uh, Richard, yourself, and other champions did uh, a month or two ago. So uh, that's a very quick update on the communications, uh, but still positively progressing all of that and trying to uh, get the message out there. I think the points made earlier in the board meeting can enhance these updates in future meetings where. Uh, board members can uh, give a little bit of information by exception in terms of how they are advocating and relaying uh, the messages to some of their networks. So thank you, Richard. Thanks, Gary. Uh, does anyone have any uh, questions for 
Gary about communications. Uh, Maureen Vieira. Uh, good morning, Chair. Um, I just wanted to report that at the end of March, uh, D2N2 was able to appoint a head of external affairs. So I will be liaising with her to ensure that we communicate as much as possible. Okay, that, thank you. Thank you, Maureen. Is that position in place? Does this person have a, is it a named person now? Yes, it is. It, uh, it's Nicola Stevens. And okay. she has come to us from Rolls Royce. Oh, very good. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Vaughan, you still have your hand up. I don't know if that's a legacy hand. No, uh, no, just a quickie. I'm thinking about the YouTube recordings of these meetings. Are they uh, left uh, historically so people can look back or are they deleted after a certain time? You know, Gary. Um, I believe that they uh, are continue to be available, but Angelica will probably uh, be able to uh, give us the, the answer if I've got that wrong. Okay. Um, they are removed. Right. Born, born. I have to say, unfortunately, they are available. Um, I couldn't bear to watch them. <laughs> so, um, no, did, it was Gary, did Angelica? Yeah. Okay. Did Angelica, oh, apologies, Vaughan. Did Angelica confirm that they that they are less she's available? Put the they're putting the she's put in the chat that they are removed as there are no requirement to hold them. Uh, I don't know what the time period is. I don't know Angelica if you know, but uh, but there you go. Okay. Angelica. Right. Just to clarify, um, I put them on private, so we don't have them going back for ages because once your minutes are approved really that is the record of the meeting i do still have a copy of them but they're just not publicly available so all the past ones bar the most recent meetings have now gone into private so are unlisted it's just that if, there, if there are new uh, members or you know new deputies uh, joining the board temporarily or otherwise it's useful for them to uh, look back and see see a bit of the history of discussions. That's all. They're held in private, so if somebody yeah. wanted to have a look at one, I could give them permission to view it. Yeah, lovely. Thanks a lot. OK. Thank you, Vaughan. Thank you, Angelica. Um, any other questions on communications? OK, thank you very much, Gary. Thank you. Um, if we could go on to future meeting dates. Um, now, it does actually say 2nd of September, um, but I've been told that the 2nd of September is actually a Saturday. So it will be the 1st of September um, is the next meeting, and that one will actually be um, uh, uh, an in-person meeting as discussed. So um, if nobody else has... If anyone has anything else they'd like to raise? No? Well, I'd like to um, thank you all for attending today, and um, I look forward to seeing you in, in, in person on the uh, 1st of September. Thank you very much, and bye-bye.